Um, actually, this is uh, <clears throat> I have been writing uh, stories for quite a while, even though my main things are different, as you know, children's stories, children's books, and novels, and so on. But uh, so sometimes an idea comes, and it comes as a, as a short story. So then I write it, and these have actually appeared over the years uh, in various places. Then I thought, now is the time to bring out a collection, because my next novel is going slowly. So I thought, OK, let's have the, the collection out of the way. And again, my publisher is Zuban. Uh, last few books were Zuban Penguin. So this is Zuban. And I'm happy with them, so I gave it to them. And it will be out next year. These are stories that are very different. As you know, I write about uh, you know the conflict situation. I'm, I get my themes from what I see around me. I'm very much into music, so uh, that also a lot of stories about musicians and music and the, the world that they live in, that is there, and a lot of about people and you know my ideas on them and things like that. So that is coming out. There is no working title. There's no title, working or non-working, because. In my experience, I, after a lot of thought, I put in a title, and then after some more thought, I change that. So we'll see what happens uh, once the title, once you know, it comes out, and it's time for a title. I'll do that. My situation is generally part of you know uh, India's northeast, but not necessarily. And some of them don't have a situation. It could happen anywhere. I because when it's a novel, you have to build up the surroundings. In a short story, I find you don't necessarily have to build up the, the, the surroundings. You go in for that, that particular incident. So you don't have to. Otherwise, you know, it's always you have to bring in a town. You have to bring in uh, the people's backgrounds, the backstories. Here, you don't have to in a short story. So that way, it's more liberating. Uh, it, they could happen anywhere. But uh, and I, for most of them, I don't think I've given them a name. And you know, of a town or anything like that. And uh, in fact, some of the musicians' stories could happen. I, I, I visualized one happening in a small town in UP, another one in Delhi, something like that. But I have not given any town name or anything like that. So these are more uh, not really that specific to the Northeast. Um, they could be anywhere, Northeast or anywhere else in India. Um, uh, and why a short story? And why not a novel? A novel is because basically, you know, these things could they demand a short story. Now, uh, not a novel, not a poem, nothing like that. Because uh, what is it that makes it a short story is that you know this character reacting in a particular way to this. Now, what she has done before, what she is going to do later, I'm not really concerned with that. For instance, the other day. A friend of mine was saying he lost his wife, and you know he she was very much into gardening, and then the, after she died the garden was neglected, and uh, on the anniversary of her death, a person whom he did not know at all, she came and she gave him a flower pot, and said that now it's time for you to start gardening again, which is a, like a metaphor, and. Uh, and so he did, you know, he began to look after the garden and he took care of that pot and so on. So basically, he was moving away from the, you know, carrying on with his life and so on. I think for a short story to come like that in a spark, it, it, it has to resonate with you. This somehow resonated with me. So this I put in, and uh, I put in, of course, different kinds of aspects and so on. So the thing is that bare minimum of background needs to be given in a short story just enough for the short story to move forward. So this is an example. And then another thing that happened, for instance, in my music story, uh, somebody told me once about a very famous musician who was so engrossed in his music that his wife, you know, she needed to be taken to hospital for her baby, for her delivery. And he kept saying, I'm coming, tell her I'm coming, I'm coming. And he, by the time he came, actually the child was born at home. Okay. But then in my story, you know, she, they, they wanted to, the family wanted to take her to uh, the hospital. She says, no, my husband is coming to take me. I will go only when he comes and she dies in my story. Of course, in real life, it has a happier ending. 
uh, and the wife is always saying, you know, he never came to take me to the hospital. You know, he never came to see the birth of the child in any way. So I wanted to show the kind of, you know, the kind of all engrossing thing that music can be for dedicated musicians. So that's another story that I did. So basically, this little story was told to me by the wife. And I saw a picture of a husband, wife, of music as the third person in that marriage and something like that, you know. So these are the things that, something that struck me, it may not strike, something that strikes me at one particular moment, it may not strike me later on, but, and then I kind of, you know, developed that. My protagonists are almost always women, which I think is a limiting factor, because so many men write uh, with protagonists who are men, uh, who are women as well as men. Somehow, you know, I think, along my, I am most empathetic to my women characters. And then the other day somebody was saying, but you know, I, and I think I do justice to the men, the chief men, I think. But then the other day somebody was saying, but you know, in this book, my, the collector's wife, you have all right, you have shown his motivations and so on, the husband, you have shown his motivations, but you have not justified what he's done. Uh, whereas you have justified everything that the women are doing. Um, so that may be a drawback, but I do, um, I must try and get more men into my right, or I must think in terms of, you know, the, the male gaze or whatever. Yeah. No, I will not say, see everybody, every writer has a point of view. I take it as a point of view that, okay, this writer, whether he's a man or a woman, whether it's a man or a woman, uh, it's his point of view, or it's her point of view. This is what I find many limitations, even of women writing about women. So that is neither here nor there. Uh, or men write excellently sometimes about women and men. Um, to go back to a very, you know, obvious example, Shakespeare's women. They are so much like women through the ages. I mean, you know, that means he's got the essence of womanhood in all the pluses and minuses and so on. Whereas at his men are also extreme. So I think either you are a good visualizer of character or you are not. And I think gender should not play uh, that much of a role. I try not to let it affect me, you know, this gender. But somehow I always, and my main characters, my main protagonists, even if it's a book for children, they always girls, little girls. There's never a male. I don't know why it turns out like that. But it's, it's happening. <laughs> Yes, uh, I place my, see, I think at least as far as I'm concerned, I have to know a place very well in order to play. Uh, uh, and of course, most of my locales are uh, imaginary. I create the place. I do it because that gives me a lot of freedom. If I place it in Bangalore, it will not give me that freedom. Uh, but if I, place in, uh, if I place it in a place which may be Bangalore, but is actually in my mind, that gives me a lot of freedom. Uh, so, um, I have written, you know, as you said, small town UP, that, that, that de story demanded that kind of thing because the characters were like that and it was that kind of music and it is not like 21st century, it is probably say 1970 or so uh, and uh, which you will not find that happening even in small town UP today. I put it back because as I said, the story came from somebody of that time. So I tried to bring in, you know, that, that uh, how her home would be, how, what it would be like, and so on. Um, when it comes to the Northeast, most of my, many of my stories, certainly my novels and the children's stories and all, they are rooted in my state north, uh, of Assam and also the surrounding uh, states because I know them best. And I find there's a lot to write about. They have not been written about, of course, in my language, Assamese, they have been written about, but then if you write in Assamese, you're dependent on a translator to go to a wider audience. I write in English. It's my first language. My mother tongue is Assamese. Uh, I, uh, writing in English, I find that, you know, it is, I, I, I enjoy this challenge of transferring uh, the, the ambience of my state, you know, the Brahmaputra, the hills, the tea garden, and so on. I enjoy that. Uh, it's a challenge that I enjoy, and I enjoy putting it into paper. And uh, I, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, I'm never 100% satisfied, but getting there, you know, it's a journey. And uh, hopefully, at one day, maybe I'll perfect it in some way. 
So yes, I write about, I love, you know, just, I love just sitting somewhere and just looking at the Brahmaputra, you must have looked, I just look at, it has so many stories to tell as it goes. So that sense I want to put into my books, the, the, the hills all around my town also, I stay in Guwahati, the hills, the way the river, you know, it is so much part of our lives, the way the hills are so much part of our lives. I, I like to transfer all that and I, I am comfortable with having that as a background for me, for my stories. Um, uh, see, when in, ma most, in so many places of the Northeast today, in so many of the states, Manipur certainly in Assam, there is so much conflict happening, okay? We grew up, our growing up years did not have conflict, but uh, because this has been going on for 20, 25 years, I mean, it's like become an endemic, I mean, there seems to be no solution, end in sight. So, the perspective is different because we know what it was like before. The young people do not know what it was like before. When my children went out of uh, Guwahati, where, I, where we stay, uh, to study, they were astonished, they were really astonished that there are no bands outside. Uh, they came to Bangalore, in fact, to study, and they were, and they were saying that, my goodness, there are no bands. And another thing, my goodness, are, are the, the VIPs go around without security, guns, and so on. They had, of course, read about it, they knew about it, but to actually see it, um, so that writers who are writing, uh, who have grown up endemically, you know, perhaps they need to come out of the region in order to see what we saw before. I say, you know, before, before all this happened. So certainly it colors our perspective. Certainly it colors the perspective of, you cannot live through it. I mean, when there's a random bomb blast, in a flyover, which you know happened about four or five years ago, killing just randomly, maiming randomly, then you realize, you know, the fragility of life, which uh, perhaps a very young person will, you, you know, they grow up thinking that, okay, this is what has always happened. But we know that this is not what has always happened. It, it should not always happen. I think that's the difference. Not just as writers, not just as artists, but as people, we should have that humanity, we should have that sense of, you know, this is not right.